Hi and welcome to Deployment News. This is where you learn about what's going on in the MDT and Config Manager space. This week I'm in beautiful Stockholm in Sweden and even early in the morning it's still really warm even though it's just May. Clear blue sky, lovely. Then the big news this week was of course that the Surface Pro 3 was announced at an event in New York. Slimmer, lighter, more powerful, looks really cool. If you go to this link, you can learn more about the specs. And if you go to this page, you can see a recording from the event in New York. Highly recommended. Then late last week, there were two new tools announced. First out, it was the Config Manager 2012 R2 prerequisite tool, a new version by fellow MVP Nikolai Anderson, a tool that simply helps you making sure your server, your site server, or whatever you are deploying has the correct prerequisites. This is how the tool works. Second, I stumbled across the PDT GUI, a user interface for the PowerShell Deployment Toolkit, a UI that helps you create the control files or the configuration file that PDT is using. This is how it works. To master the GUI for the PowerShell Deployment Toolkit, you need to have a solid understanding about the PowerShell Deployment Toolkit itself. So first of all, what is it? If I go to this link here, this is the main download for the PDT. The kit itself, it's an automated deployment of all the System Center 2012 R2 components or servers. In this scenario here, I'm going to deploy a few machines. This is my goal. To deploy the main controller, a config manager server, and a management server running remote desktop. This is where I install my consoles and admin tools and such. If I go back to the folder, to build a domain controller and a config manager site server, I obviously need a bunch of files. Windows, SQL, Config Manager, and so forth. In here, there is a downloader that can help me download most of those files. Let me show you how that looks. The first time you run this downloader, it'll run for about an hour, downloading everything you need. The default location is the C colon installer folder. But I've changed that, because in the kit, there is a file called variable.xml that holds the setup for the environment I'm using. And as you can see here, I've changed it to do my F drive rather than my C drive. This file also holds the information about the VMs I'm going to build. There is another file that is interesting as well, the workflow XML. This is the intelligence, the know-how in the kit itself. This is a listing of all components that are needed and what system center component or product that is using what prerequisites and so forth. As you can see here, some of the components could not be downloaded automatically. They need to be downloaded manually. So for example, 2012R2 and Config Manager. The first time I run this kit or the downloader, I kind of expected these folders to be created, but no. So you need to open the script to figure out, all right, what folder should these files be in? Or you can do what I did. I simply opened up Procmon and had a filter for the PowerShell file. And now I could see that for 2012R2, I'm supposed to use that folder. For Config Manager, that folder. The Config Manager prerequisites, that folder, and so forth. So if I go back here to my F colon installer fo folder, this is where I have the files. And as you can see, these are the source files for server. If I go to System Center R2, this is where I have my Config Manager files. Just the setup for Config Manager and in the download folder, the prerequisites for Config Manager. If I run the downloader once more, It now found both the server files and the config manager files. So now the, the components are downloaded. There is one more thing I need. In this folder, there is a script that builds the virtual machines for me, the VM creator. This one is using reference images. So I need to create one. 
And to do this, I'm simply using the Convert to Windows Image Script from the TechNet Gallery. If I go back to my PowerShell command prompt and run that script, Convert Windows Image, Source Path, Edition, Server, Standard, VHD Format, VHDX, and a folder. And now it applies a WIM file to that VHDX file. Now I have my installer files in here. I have my reference images here. And I'm good to go and open up the UI. Do some general configuration like the installer folder. And here I have my VMs. For example, my domain controller and my config manager server. How much memory it's using, how many data disks I'm using, and what size they are. Then I have my SQL servers. And of course, I'm using my site server as my SQL server. And you can also see I can specify what folders to store the various SQL files in. Then I have my roles. So I have my config manager server. For example, I'm using the database on CM1 and the provider and site server on CM1 as well. And I'm also installing the console on my remote desktop server. This GUI gives you a really good overview about what you're about to install on these various VMs. Of course, if you're hardcore, you can scrap the UI and you can go directly to the variable file and you can change the information in here. Now it's building time. Again, this is what I want to build. I go to a PowerShell prompt. I run the VM creator. And it will do exactly that. Shortly, it will build my domain controller. And then it will wait until it completes. Then it will build the others. Now the setup is running. If I go to my Hyper-V manager, I now have a domain controller in the build. Once that is completed, the kit will automatically continue and build the other VMs, CM1 and RDO1. Pretty cool. That's all for this week. Thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you again next week. Thanks.